hi welcome everyone in today's video i am going to give you a uh, overview of how to do a simple regression in excel this video is for people who are uh, students and researchers who are learning uh, how to do regression analysis for their quantitative research and we'll start with uh, basics of regression analysis in an excel file so that you can get to know with your data uh, and then build on using complicated regression softwares or regression models so i have a data set which is for pakistan and there are few variables i will start with uh, doing regression on few variables and then uh, tell you how to uh, do uh, diagnostics on it so we'll start with this data the variable names are shown uh, detailed on the top and the short names are shown here and this is data for 30 years for the case of pakistan before doing regression you have to go in your data in your excel file and and you have to look at if there is a, a, a there is an option for regression analysis in 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 the new uh, excel uh, softwares if you have installed recently you will not find the setting for regression for that you have to go in file and and go in more uh, in options and go in add-ins and you have to uh, excel tool pack press go and you install this analysis tool pack and you press ok and you go in data you will see data analysis option when you do see this now we'll go towards doing first of all descriptive stats doing this data analysis and now there is option of descriptive stats press ok now input range so I will select all the data for which I need descriptive stats. So these are my data. And the first row is labels. And the sheet I need, I will name it descriptives. And I need summary stats. And uh, so when I press OK, it will make a new sheet where for each variable there is a mean, standard deviation, median, mod, standard. Uh, first is standard error, then standard deviation. Then the simple variance, skewness, kurtosis, range, minimum, sum, count. So for all variables, I have the descriptives. So you can see the descriptive stats for each variable using this method. Now if I go back, I can do other things like going data analysis, go for correlation. Then I can select all the variables again from first variable to the last observation of the last variable and first variables are rows and then I say it's correlation and press ok it will make, give me a correlation table so in the regression analysis you need to make sure the variables which have correlation above uh, 0.9 may have high uh, co high multicollinearity with each other when they are estimated in the same order because the formula for VIF is VIF is equal to uh, bracket open 1 divided by 1 min uh, bracket open 1 minus correlation square so if you have a correlation value here and it is about 0.9 so a square will become very high and when you subtract it with minus the answer will be very small and, and what will happen is that VIF will be big. So if VIF is above 10 in time series regression, there is multicollinearity. So uh, you, if you are using variables, make sure that the independent variables do not have very high correlation with each other. And then first try to select variables in a way that first column should be your dependent variable so that in your correlations you have uh, first column as dependent variable and independent variables correlation are shown here. So you can just talk about the first column as as interpretation of the association of your independent variables with the dependent and for others just have a look if the correlations are not higher than not very high so that uh, there is less chances of multicollinearity then we go towards uh, you have to check the, click the spellings here it's descriptives so I will rename it then we'll go into back to data and now we'll go towards regression so i will go in data data analysis and there is an option of regression analysis 
somewhere here so this is the regression axis okay first of all i will select the dependent variable this is the first one so you have to select it appropriately based upon what you are trying to do so you should know what is your dependent variable and what are your independent variables i will select the independent variable so i will select four of them because the data is not big enough to select all of them and then i need to tell that labels are in the first column and i need uh, the sheet name should be regression i need all the residual plots standardized residuals residual plots line fades normality plots so need all of them so that we can discuss the results so when i press ok let's make a new sheet you can see it here that the summary r square uh, type things are here then f test is shown here that you that you can understand that the overall model is significant because f p value is very small this is intercept and this is the intercept value these are the independent variables and their coefficients based on the p values you can note that uh, this one is not significant he and this one is also not significant while others are significant because the p values are less than 0.10 at 10 percent and then you can look at that this is the estimated dependent variable these are the residuals and these are the standardized residuals okay so we can uh, have a look that if the standardized residuals are very big they also indicate that that observation is an outlier and and then what you can do it now we can have a look at the graphs so we can start from here so this is the normality plot so if the variable is normal this line should be diagonal so this shows that the bm is not um, uh, normal this is the the independent variable and dependent fit plot so you can look at that it, they are following similar pattern it means uh, the uh, prediction was accurate enough then it's cpa versus uh, dependent variable it's also following similar pattern then it is a, a education expenditure and dependent variable are uh, the predicted and actual are very near then there is a health expenditure and the uh, broad money so following similar pattern then there is gdp similar pattern then there is the residuals and unemployment this graph is used to check heteroscedasticity you can look at how the, the deviation is bigger here and smaller here so it looks like unemployment and unemployment variable is creating some heterogeneity in the data if you look at cpi it is distributed evenly just for few observation like here so it is not that uh, harmful to the model uh, with respect to heteroscedasticity and if you look at this graph this is also not uh, not very much scattered so uh, not heterogeneously scattered then for education health expenditure if you look at that this is also evenly distributed just for few outliers here so up till now only the unemployment has shown uh, heterogeneity so gdp also have some outliers so this way we confirm that there is a out, uh, outlier heterogeneity in unemployment variable then if you want to look at to to check for normality of the model what you can do is that you can you can make an histogram of residual chart so select the residuals and go in insert and you can select the histogram so if the histogram is following a normal pattern then it means that it is um, normal distributed uh, and that is normal otherwise it is skewed then what you can, if you want to see uh, after correlation what you can do is copy the residuals and paste by after one step and look for correlation between them so what i can do is that i will write equal to cor corel so i will select first data from the second value because the first one cannot be compared comma second data from here to the second last observation and press ok so this is correlation value if it is very high then there is auto correlation in the data this way you can check for auto correlation and so i have shown you three tests one for multicollinearity using the correlation matrix second heteroscedasticity where i compared the variables with the residuals third is the auto correlation where i compared the residual with the past residuals fourth the normality where i made the histogram for the residuals this way you can check for four kinds of 
diagnostics in the data. Lastly, you can also check for non-linearity. For that, what you can do is that suppose that this is your data, go in the format and uh, select the graph and in the format, uh, let's select, go in the chart design and add a quadratic fit trend line. Uh, linear and go in more trend line options and select for polynomial degree 2 if you look at that line is bending it means it has a non-linear effect so but we have only added singular power 1 variable there is no square form here so it means our model will have a problem of mis misspecification because the graph is showing that unemployment has a non-linear effect it means there is unemployment and unemployment square playing a role but in the model there is no unemployment square so we wrongly assumed that the unemployment is linear but actually it is non-linear so this is called misspecification bias so i can show you one more example from gdp plot what we can do is that make it big enough and then go in chart element add a trend line more trend line options and go in polynomial and those so this is straight enough and very near to zero it looks like it's a uh, horizontal line but it can be solved further by taking log of dependent independent variable because it has very high variation if you look at in descriptives so range so range value is normal for all variables like it's 24 for bm he 1.6 1.25 164 but for gdp is very big so when you have variables where the range values are not comparable then the biggest one should be taken log so that it is standardized to others then it will give you better results and it might solve problems like heterogeneity and non-linear uh, specification bias hopefully you like the video and you understood how to manage regression results in excel file and make some graphs uh, like these and then you have to interpret them and uh, and you can make your projects using using excel file data thank you very much